Welcome to 15 Minutes With. I'm Professor Robin Greimer, Deputy Director of the Centre for Eye Research Australia, and today it's my great pleasure to be talking with Associate Professor Penny Allen, a dear friend and colleague. Welcome, Penny. Oh, thanks, Robin. It's a great pleasure to be here. Penny, can you tell us, first of all, what your role here at CERA is? Uh, well, my role is a clinician researcher, so I'm a vitro-retinal surgeon. And uh, you've been involved for some time looking at the bionic eye work in CERA? Yes, I have, but I've also had a strong clinical interest in severe eye infections, endophthalmitis. So today, what, what are we looking at? What's our question we're in exploring today? Well, I think we're looking at endophthalmitis today and uh, how we can go about helping um, to solve the issues of this severe blinding eye infection. So just uh, to be clear for all of us, so endophthalmitis is when you have infection? Infection within the eye and that infection may occur in association with trauma or surgery, but it also can occur in the setting of systemic infection. So a patient may have a septicemia, that is infection within the blood, and that infection may then deposit within the eye. And obviously in this situation, the patient not only has to have treatment for the eye, but also for the systemic infection. But these infections can be very severe and blinding. And so from a research point of view then, what are you trying to look at in endophthalmitis? Well, for many years we've had a database which has um, tracked the trends in these infections. And uh, for example, with the injections that are used for age-related macular degeneration and diabetes, we've noticed an increase in endophthalmitis following these injections as they've become more commonly used. We've also found trends, however, in infections um, due to systemic causes. Uh, there has been an increase in infections due to gram-negative septicemia, particularly in patients from Asia or travelling in Asia, and this has been important to highlight for general physicians and also eye physicians in Australia. So is your aim to try and work out um, um, more quickly what antibiotics to use or, or why, why is it important to track the particular bugs? Well, it's important firstly so that um, patients uh, can be diagnosed more easily, that um, a patient presenting with a septicemia, for example, then clinicians need to understand that an eye infection could be associated with this. Prompt treatment leads to better outcomes. Um, we also need to follow the bacterial isolates so that we can work out trends in resistance mm -hmm. and hence the importance of using different antibiotics if resistance develops. Um, but also we more recently have started to look at susceptibility and we have a new project where we are looking at the individual patient's uh, white blood cell response to infection. Okay, extremely interesting. And I understand that you've managed to create a, a database that you can now sort of interrogate more easily than a, a, a simple spreadsheet. Is, how's that benefiting you? Well, that's benefiting us in that we can analyse the data more easily. You know, we have better access to the data. We can look at these various uh, surgical groups that have had infections and hence use the data more readily. And compared to perhaps people around the world, or have you, is your database one of the a few or do most people collect this sort of information? Um, I think there's only a few centres that have been collecting data for a long period of time and we've nearly been collecting data for 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So certainly um, that's enabled us to track um, you know, these trends, the reducing incidence of infection following cataract surgery, for example, increase after injections. We did also have a, a you know, increased incidence in um, infections in intravenous drug users a few years ago, and it enabled us to develop a health um, strategy mm -hmm. with the state government to try to uh, manage those. Fantastic, Penny. Uh, and just finally, I guess, um, you mentioned that there's an increase with these injections. Uh, have you any advice um, from what you've learnt as to what the, why there is this increase? Is it purely just numbers that is increasing? 
Mainly, mainly numbers. Um, there's certainly been some good work come out of the US to try to develop guidelines um, to reduce the incidence of the infections and we certainly have also surveyed ophthalmologists in the state uh, to try and work out whether they follow those guidelines um, and also you know aid our local ophthalmologists in the knowledge of this um, but mainly it's the increase in the number of injections that are being performed. Okay. Well clearly a very important uh uh, database to have and over 20 years is a fantastic collection and you clearly see changes which is uh, fascinating. Mm, yeah. So we look forward to seeing what the next 20 years will, will um, show with your end ophthalmologist database and uh, research penny. So yeah. thank you very much for coming in today. Well thanks Robin, it's great that you know people are interested in the work.